welcome to Stone Magpie. I've been working on the new picture from Diamond Art Studio. You may well have seen the sneak peek video recently and I couldn't wait to get started on it. It felt a little bit naughty because it's not been released yet. <laughs> so I did hold off a little bit until the sneak peek video was put out there for everybody to see. So, so far, I have started the top row. If you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I start top right and move to the left and then I do the next row down and, fo and follow that process all the way down the canvas. So what do you think so far? Have you seen the details already in this corner with the black outline bringing out that rope design all the way around the whole diamond painting. It's framed by this rope. It's fantastic. And look at the sky that I talked about during the sneak peek video with that wash of colour, like a watercolour effect in the background. So normally, as I say, I would go along the whole row and then move to the next row. However, I thought this may well be a really interesting part to diamond paint with you today. So that's the bit I'm going to work on. Whether I get the whole section finished, I don't know. So I'm going to concentrate on the purples, blacks and the greens and see where we get. And I'm still using my favourite diamond pen from Crafted Makes with Abby's putty in and it is still the same putty. <laughs> It's not been changed out yet, even though I really like the sound of a scent called monkey farts. <laughs> it sounds an amazing scent with banana yet florals in it as well. So I've got my eye on that one to um, change it up a little bit. I would have to change my diamond painting pen if I get a new scent though, because this putty lasts such a long time. Shall we do a bit of outlining with these three tens first? Get some of that detail in. So you'll see that I did kit up into my Elizabeth Ward style storage for this kit. And it worked really well with these big pots for the three tens especially because there are a lot of three tens. I think I got two packets in the big pot and I've got four left over. <laughs> so many, many three tens with all of the outlining, but it works so well to bring out the colours against the three ten black. The canvas is beautiful to work on. It is my first diamond painting from Diamond Art Studio and I am really impressed with the quality. It just feels superb. And the glue is really nice in the fact that it sticks so well. It, it kind of grabs the diamonds from you, if that makes sense. It's not a slippy, slippy glue like some that I've had where um, they slide around a lot. It holds on to the diamonds as they're placed. If you've worked on a Diamond Art Studio canvas before, let me know if you agree with that because it's an observation that I made quite early on in this diamond painting. I find it easier to use than the slippy glues. That's not to say that you can't adjust the diamonds if you want to. It's There's still a little bit of a play in it. So if you don't get them quite bob on, you can push them around. So I have been very impressed so far. 
and I've got such a big painting to do so I am thrilled that I'm pleased with it. I didn't want it to be a chore and it isn't going to be and because I start at the top of the diamond painting I've got all of those wonderful details to look forward to throughout the whole painting finishing off with those delightful ivy leaves right at the bottom. <gasps> Ooh, don't want to wish my time away with this painting, but oh, it's exciting. I saw a lot of comments, not only on my channel, but also on the Facebook page of Diamond Art Studio, of everybody not being able to wait till Thursday release date for this one. And I'm really not surprised at all. It's such a beautiful picture, very, very special. A commissioned piece by Diamond Art Studio to the artist, Moon Shaped Monday. They commissioned this piece specially to be made into a diamond painting and it, it's, it's delightful. It is so lovely. Oh, I'm very, very lucky, very, very fortunate with the kits that I have got recently. I'm so pleased with all of them and I will be working on another kit as well. So please do keep tuned to the channel. Please do subscribe. It is always appreciated. Thank you so much to everybody that does so. I really, really appreciate you having you here along with me to share the excitement and the joy of this wonderful craft. I've got some very, very lovely viewers and you know who you are because you're all amazing. You all share comments and feedback and tell me what you're up to. It's a great community here and I'm very, very thankful for it. I think, honestly, I love doing this so much that even if I didn't have anybody watching, I wouldn't stop doing it. <laughs> so it's nice to know that you're out there enjoying what I'm doing, my progress, my investigations into certain things and trying out new things every now and again. So, oh, it's just wonderful. So popping in these odd little placements of the three tens around and then we can move on to should we do green or purple green or purple hmm. maybe do the greens and then the purples after So there we have it. And actually, I should have mentioned before I covered up all of those number six symbols that diamond arts, oh, I haven't quite finished there. If you look here, I'll try and zoom in a little bit for you here. If you look closely, the symbols are not white on black. Diamond Art Studio print them so they're more of a gold color symbol and that's to help with the eyesight. And I wonder whether they chose the gold colour because it's known that if you've got dyslexia, using a orangey yellow colour can help with that. So I should have asked the question before doing the video, sorry about that, whether they chose that colour because I know they chose, I know they do it to help see the symbol better than a white. I wonder if that was the colour chosen to help those with dyslexia whilst they're diamond painting. I will ask the question and feed back to you about it. It might just be um, 
It might just be a random selection and nothing to do with that. So I'll find out and feed back. I know when I worked in a school, we started printing out um, worksheets and things like that for the children, for all of the children in the whole school onto a cream paper rather than a white paper for that reason. And it was for the whole school so that those children that were struggling didn't feel different. So that's where my knowledge of that comes from. Tell you what, working in a school, I learnt lots. <laughs> I worked in the office, not as a teacher, and I learnt so much because I can't remember learning about different English terms in schools. When I was at primary school, I can't remember learning about onomatopoeias. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right. Um, onomatopoeias, where it's the sound of a word sounds so you would say um oh gosh what's an example i banged the desk and because bang sounds like the sound bang it's an on onomatopoeia anyway so here we go with these greens Okay, sorry about that. Monty got home. You might have heard his little feet tap tapping away there as he came through the door. So I obviously had to say hello and give him lots of love and <laughs> welcome him home. And now he's sat beside me. If you don't know, Monty is a little dog. He is a cockapoo. He's a tricolour actually. So he's mainly black with a white bib and brown paws. And he's a cute, he's so cute. And he likes lots of love and affection, as do a lot of animals. So if I hadn't have stopped there to give him a little bit of fuss, he would have been nudging my arm <laughs> until I gave in. So it's always best to give in before that happens. So you may well hear him if he hears those birds or they fly to the door, he, he may well be jumping up to um, say hello to them, let's put it that way. <laughs> yes, they do, they do drive him mad sometimes, I think he gets quite protective of his area. And they just sit atop the fence outside and just look at him with disdain <laughs> while he goes mad at the window. So, anyway, hopefully he won't do that, but if he does, I will break off the video again so that we don't have deafening. <laughs> anyway, we're moving on to this beautiful pink colour within this flower. So gentle. And this is like, um, it's like a bell flower like a helmet flower drooping over the top of the fairy house in the picture. Really, really lovely. I don't think it's a bluebell. I actually think it's a bell flower, more of a summer rather than a spring flower. But I wouldn't mind if it's a bluebell anyway, because I love bluebells. When they pop through in spring in all of the woodlands, such a happy flower. Now, further down the canvas, you may have well have spotted during the unboxing a clump of daisies, the big daisy heads. And as I was driving to work the other day, I noticed that a lot of the verges on what I call my lovely road, <laughs> which yes, I do talk about often because I love it so much. And 
Along the verges, there are loads of these big daisies. Oh my goodness, they are so lovely and they sit waving in the sunshine. Oh, really pretty. So I'm also looking forward to getting to that point in the canvas and diamond painting those. I think they're going to be really lovely in the whites. Such a lot to look forward to on this canvas, as I was saying a little bit earlier. So many details. And yes, my unboxing, well, my unboxings can be quite long anyway, because I do like to go into detail, but there was so much to look at throughout the painting that um, <laughs> I kept going backwards and forwards and adding a bit more. <laughs> as I notice the different details. So here we go with a bit of a mid pink. There we go. Now these diamonds were provided in self seal bags and I did consider perhaps diamond painting from the packets as I like to show that sometimes. However, I did have this Elizabeth Ward's storage available to use. So I decided, because this is quite a big painting, it is 90 centimeters long, I decided to kit up in the end and it didn't take long at all. There are 50 colors in this kit and I will show you briefly my storage once we finish so that you can see how I um, organized it. If you haven't watched my channel before, then welcome along. And when I kit up, I do tend to kit up by symbol. I just find it so much easier. And that started once I was doing um, Josephine Wall diamond paintings from Diamond Painting Deutschland which had so many colours, like 200 and odd colours in them, that for me, it made sense to kit up by symbol and then just find those within the tubs. And it sort of stuck with me. Before then, I did organise by number, um, but I would have always been referring to the legend. So I decided to kit up by symbol found it worked really well and now I just stick with that. So when I show you my storage box, you'll see what I mean. If I'd use the packets, I may well have stuck the symbol on because we get them on the stickers anyway with Diamonds Art Studio, or I may well have done it by number when I did the Oraloa kit recently, the fairy on a toadstool, I did actually diamond paint that one by number because I like to change it up a little bit for you to see different ways of diamond painting and then you can see which way would work well for you. So I would encourage you to try new things and see so that you can find your own system. Monty, sit down, please. Trying to make himself comfortable. He won't sit in a dog bed at all. So we've tried lots of different dog beds for him. And no, he prefers to sit on the carpet. Even if there's a dog bed there, he will sit beside it rather than in it. but he does like to scratch the carpet a little bit to make it a little bit um, fluffy before he sits down. <laughs> oh dear, can't be precious about my carpet here. So with these diamonds, um, there are a few that have 
little bubbles in as we can expect from any kits there are diamonds with bubbles in but there are not many so as you can see I am still able to multi-place and I just avoid those ones but the diamonds do sit really well together and yes as you just heard there some of them do click into place because the grid on the canvas is lovely and tight i do like a tight canvas i just think especially with squares it helps with the placements when they are tight together rather than quite gappy which you can get sometimes so i'm really happy with the grid on the canvas Let's do the H symbol next. Monty agrees. Ooh, look at this purple. What a joy. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful purple. And by the way, you may be able to hear the protective cover. I don't cut off the cover as I diamond paint. I fold it back. I've got two cover minders on at the moment, a butterfly and a hungry caterpillar. I made the hungry caterpillar one myself. I'll have to show you it because I think it's really cute and it really suits this diamond painting. Um, so you may hear it crinkling a little bit. However, it's such a lovely thick cover that hopefully it won't make too much noise. So tell me, do you cut through your cover protector as you diamond paint? Do you tend to place washi tape down and then cut around? I've never done that, but perhaps I should try it. I've just been talking about trying new things I've always folded my cover protector back because even though with squares they tend to cover the stickiness of the canvas, I do like to keep it a little bit protected anyway as I'm working. So when I, when I finish doing a session on my diamond painting, I will put it flat on the table and cover it back up with the cover protector just to try and keep a bit of dust off. So if I cut through that, that wouldn't obviously be as easy to do. Not that I live in a particularly dusty house, she says. We've done the H's, let's go to the J's. See what wonderful pinky purple we have as J symbol. And here it is. So pretty. This flower is actually more pinky than I thought. This is a sort of a purple pink. I would call it, whereas I was expecting it to be purple. Nice to have a surprise. Putting these little edge bits. I've been at work today and all I've done is thought I just want to be at home diamond painting and now that I'm here oh the joy sitting doing
it just helps just take you away from everything, doesn't it? Sitting, focusing on our paintings. Now, are you painting alongside with me at the moment? Or are you, perhaps you're working whilst you're listening to me diamond paint. Perhaps you're able to do that at work and it helps you feel like you're doing more of your own. I'm not allowed to do that. And to be honest, I work in accounts, so I really do have to concentrate on the figures. <laughs> Can you imagine, oh my goodness, if I was tuned in to somebody on YouTube whilst I was trying to do my job, well, I think I would be paying everybody anything. <laughs> I don't think I'd be doing my job for long, let's put it that way. <laughs> I don't think you can multitask in accounts. <laughs> Or maybe it's just because I'm not that experienced to be able to multitask in it at the moment. But I have discovered that there are many people who do quite, um, should I say mundane, um, well, jobs, you know, that people have to do to pay the bills. And yet they have such creative jobs outside of the workplace um, from DJs. I've got um, a chap that I just happened to start talking to through work because normally we were just sending each other accounting emails. And, and then we discovered that he has a radio show on a Saturday morning I mean, how creative is that? And his song choices are fantastic. I, I mean, Saturday morning is a recording time for me quite often. So I've had to sort of reschedule my things a little bit so that I can listen to his show because he plays a lot of 80s music. Um, and that takes me back to my youth. So, and he's so good at it and yet, he also works in accounts, so then I know people who DJ at weddings and all sorts of things. People who make um, Christmas decorations and sell them at craft fairs. So it does make me wonder just how many people out there would make money from doing what they love. If they, if they put their mind to it, to work full time at it. I wonder how successful it would be. It's quite a risk, isn't it, to leave a full time job to do that. But do let me know if anybody's watching and you managed to leave your full time job doing whatever it may be to work on your passion and you're making it work that would be amazing well done you if that is the case i often have loads of ideas as you know <laughs> if you've been watching me a while <laughs> i do have lots of ideas but it's okay having ideas isn't it but putting them into practice is a completely different kettle of fish Notice I've got like a bit of junk there. I'll just get my tweezers. Just get that little bit there off. That's better. So do let me know what you're all working on, won't you, please? I love to know because sometimes I've not seen the diamond paintings before or heard of the company and I really like to look them up and see and it gives me ideas too when you do that. So let me know if you've worked on a Diamond Art Studio kit before. And also let me know what you're currently working on. Whatever company you've bought from. Please 
I really do, and I'm not just saying it, do love to hear what you're doing. This is just lovely, just lovely. What lovely colours. And the sparkle. It's not that sunny in the UK today. It's been a bit rainy today. And yet these diamonds are sparkling up at me. There's just no way you'd ever be able to get this finish on any by any other means. I did miss an H out, so I need to go back and just pull this one out of the tub. It's another good reason to use Elizabeth Ward style storage because you can just dip your pen in and pull one out. Done. I've got a little kick sign here. Oh, just one little white AB to pop in there. There we are. Now we've got the anchor sign, a big pot of 3756 with this minty colour, which is part of the sky. Now, sometimes with the putty, I find that it's not picking up evenly and I just rub my thumb along instead of always putting more in, I rub it along and it evens it off again. I mean, I've had this putty in a long time now and sometimes I don't get to diamond paint during the week and I come back to it at a weekend and the putty is still working superbly. So impressed by it. If, if you've not discovered Abby's putty yet, you can actually get it from Diamond Art Studio, as well as on Etsy. It's my new found favourite. And you can see now it's picking up a lot more evenly. Now I've rubbed across and evened out the putty again. And what I find is when it sinks down a little bit like it is now, it doesn't leave residue on when I first fill it, it's quite, it feels quite full and sometimes it puts a little bit of residue on the canvas because I tilt my diamond pen, which I don't think I really realised I did. <laughs> but I tend to pick up my diamonds on a tilt and place them on a tilt. And um, it can get caught sometimes, which is fine with squares because you don't see it anyway. But now you can see I can just fly along without any worries at all. And by the way, if you are going to Diamond Art Studio to buy a kit, there is a discount code in the description box below for you to use. And you can have some discount off their kits it doesn't include accessories, however. So we just do a long, doing the horizontal placing. a pretty colour. It's so pale that it actually looks fairly white on the canvas. However, if there was a white next to it, we'd see the, the mintiness of it. Such a pretty colour. Do you remember in the 80s when they used to get that paint which was white with a hint of? This is a bit like white with a hint of apple. I'm sure that's what they'd have called that colour. Very subtle. And next we come to this symbol, which is a darker mint. It's 
Oh, look at that. <gasps> Oof, yummy. I say yummy. It kind of reminds me of a really fresh toothpaste colour. So, or a really nice fresh mint to like, um, would it be a spearmint or a peppermint? I think it would be a spearmint. Usually one of the or the other is a blue, isn't it? So you get a very pale blue and a very pale green. And I can never really remember which way round they are. I'm sure there'll be a rule. <laughs> <laughs> Just change that one out because it had a little bubble on the top. in this background and then we'll have a view from further away and I did promise you that I would show you my storage box for how I've organised the symbols. So yes, I place on a slight angle so that I can sort of push them into place. I don't know if you noticed then. Um, I just find it works well for me when I'm multi-placing to do it that way. And I don't know if that's because it's a metal tip. I'm not sure. It is a five placer that I use. which was provided with the pen when I bought it. Well, I was given this one. To tell the truth, my mum bought me this one as a gift. I have got other Crafted Makes pens and asked for the metal tips and they were provided in the purchase. So Crafted Makes is on Etsy. If you'd like to discover that as well. This one is slightly smaller. I have showed it on a video before against a usual size diamond pen. So it was on a whip and chat. Sorry, I can't remember which one. <laughs> But I find this one really nice to use. It's a bit shorter to hold and twizzle round when I move from multi-placer to single placer. But when I get hold of more Abby's putty, then I will be using other diamond painting pens so that I can have other scents. I'm just trying to decide. I, I Like I say, I really like the sound of monkey farts which is I really like the sound of it ha <laughs> ha um, <clears throat> and I'm sure it doesn't smell as bad as what the name <laughs> suggests <laughs> I'm sure it's a beautiful smell being banana and florals rather than you know farty <laughs> oh dear but it's a fun name So I just need to decide which ones I'm going to get next. And yes, you heard right, I'll probably get a plural. So, hmm, because this one I'm using is Sweet Peach. And every now and again, you get a blast of scent as you're putting the diamonds down. It's really, it's really nice. So I didn't know whether to go fruity or chocolatey because there is a chocolate orange scent but I am thinking it's going to make me really hungry and you know that I 
love my sweeties and um, really I eat too many sweeties truth be told <laughs> I have actually got some next to me in my Thomas cup I've got some sour skittles this time so yes I think it would probably be quite dangerous for me to get a chocolate scent because oh, not that I would eat it I'm sure but it would just make me want to have chocolate And I am a bit of a teenager. When it comes to chocolate, I do still get chocolate spots. <laughs> That's a sure sign that I've had too much of it. Yeah. That's not me making that <laughs> noisy slurping sound just so you're aware that is Monty having a big drink. <laughs> Although apparently it is it is supposed to be good in polite society to slurp your tea. Apparently it was quite a thing to do at one time. And I think in tea tasting they do say that, don't they? In tea tasting, they do encourage you to slurp as well. I've seen that on the telly, not that I've been for a tea tasting session. Because, well, to be honest, I love tea, but I am a bit of a builder's tea, you know, standard breakfast tea really strong hardly any milk that's how I like it I think if I went to a tea tasting then um, yeah I think it might be a bit wasted on me <laughs> although we did go to the Ritz in London to the Palm Cafe, Palm Cafe was, is it called Palm Court Cafe um, oh, and that was beautiful really was gorgeous we had an afternoon tea there and I was a very well behaved. I didn't ask for builder's tea there. <laughs> I do know how to posh it up a little bit sometimes, stick my finger out as I'm slurping <laughs> my tea. <laughs> so yeah, when we went there, I actually had rose tea and I drank it black very subtle flavour, it was absolutely delicious. So to be recommended if you ever go to the Palm, I'm sure it's called the Palm Court Cafe at the Ritz. Right, I think I've just got a number six that I missed earlier and then this section is finished. And I didn't think I would, would be finishing the section with you, so I'm thrilled that I have. Right, let's have a look from further away and see it all as one. So there we are. We've done a little section along the top and then the bellflower just underneath that top row. I will be completing these two sections very soon, but you can see, in fact, let's remove those so that you can see the different colorways from the diamonds to the printed canvas there with these details within the sky. They're really pretty with the turquoisey blues, the pale blues, and then that minty green and very, very light apple white. You'll see that is actually this colour here. Really subtle. Look at the swirls in this bit here with that very, very pale white, apple white, and then the darker mint, peppermint, spearmint. <laughs> I'm going to say peppermint. I don't know. 
some mint <laughs> in the background there and then those purples just popping through with that green going up to the stalk there such fun and lovely to diamond paint so pop this back on here for next time whilst I've got this here here's my hungry caterpillar cover minder and I just made him out of I think it was an earring and pop, I popped two little magnets on the back to hold him nice nicely on the canvas and then my butterfly to match as well okay lastly I did promise you a view of my storage look ooh, all of this detail to enjoy okay the storage here here we have it so I kept the big tubs at the side so I've got number six I've got that oval it looks to me a little bit like a paper clip and then the anchor and then what I did I mixed everything else depending on the symbol so I've done the letters First of all, I did the three lines, which is like the Roman numeral number three. And then I've gone A, lowercase a, lowercase a, capital A, C, D, E, E, F, G, H, H, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, R, lowercase t, T, U, V, X, Y. And then I've done random symbols down here. So question mark, dot, twirl. I don't know what you would call that. It's like a squiggle with a line underneath. Then a line, an arrow, two lines going into a different direction to each other. The Mercedes <laughs> car symbol and a star symbol. And then down this side, I've gone numbers, and then I've gone with like mathematical type symbols down this side. So we've got, um, it's a bit like a plus sign. Then we've got a divide and equals a plus sign, a plus sign and a tick. And that's how I've organized the symbols for this kit. And I just find it works really well. And it's nice with the Elizabeth Ward that you can still swap around the different size containers to suit. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit more of the kit, seeing how I've kitted it up. And I really hope that you enjoy your own diamond painting. Until next time, take care everyone. Bye for now.